This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue reading from Book 2, Unlearning the World. In Chapter 1, this is Section 2, Approaching the Idea of Forgiveness. The feeling of peace is how we can know when we are in a state of non-judgment. To get at the real depth of what forgiveness is, takes study and understanding. There are many different approaches that Jesus takes in the course to meet the mind at different levels. He even uses visualization exercises where he tells you to think of someone you are having difficulty with and to envision them in light, etc. I would say that these are more initial kinds of experiences. Beyond that, you get down to the deeper realms where there is nothing to forgive. You forgive your brother for what he has not done. Let's look at this interesting idea that I forgive my brother for what he has not done. But I just saw him growl at me. She did not pay the money back to me that she has said she would or whatever the grievance is. I see the behavior right here. What am I supposed to do? Deny what my eyes have seen? This is about perception. The most helpful way to look at perception is to first remember that what the Course calls our real thoughts are way down in our mind. They are the light. The mind ran away from the light. It made attack thoughts and the world of perception to cover over and hide from the light. In other words, the world is projected out there to keep the mind distracted from looking at these silly thoughts and seeing that the attack thoughts are not real. Forgiveness is being able, in a Zen sense, to step back into your mind and be able to turn within and look at these thoughts without being horrified. Now the mind believes that it is these thoughts. You know how identified you can be with cars, houses, bodies, body images. And they are all really just a projection of thoughts. Imagine your own private world. You close your eyes and meditate and you hear all this chatter going on. You have all these judgment thoughts about the lady down the street or the boss or whatever. The mind is horrified by these thoughts. It feels overwhelmed at times. What can I do? My mind is just filled with these thoughts. In a sense, the ego is saying, Right, you are guilty. You do not want to look at these thoughts. Go get involved in some kind of addiction out there in the world. Get very busy so you can become so distracted that you won't ever have time to be quiet. 
because it is too scary to be quiet and look at these thoughts. The thoughts are not good or bad. They are unreal. They are nothing. But the mind is convinced that they are more than nothing. It is convinced that they are me. I am a judgmental person. I am a controlling person. All the attributes that we give ourselves have to do with the thoughts that are in there. Forgiveness is a stepping back from those thoughts. A brilliant way to approach forgiveness is to remember that the mind is causative. The mind is the cause of everything. Once it is bought into the crazy puff of an idea of separation and it fell asleep, cause and effect were split off and turned around backwards. Now it believes it is a person in a world. It seems as if the cause of our state of mind is everything that is happening around us. In this world, people think, Yeah, but what do you do when a tornado is coming? There is danger if the news says there is a killer loose in the neighborhood. If the body seems to be ill or to be sick or to have cancer or something, what do you do? All these things seem to be taking away your peace of mind. This is like a real problem. I have a sick body or something. But the body, as well as the entire world, is part of the screen that the ego counsels is where the problem is. Forgiveness, in the ultimate sense, is the reversal of that. It is being able to gradually transfer these ideas in more and more situations as you go through your daily life and to bring cause and effect back around to see that the mind is the cause. Everything is a decision that I am making and my state of mind is an effect. Literally, I can choose peace in a concentration camp or when my car has suddenly vanished from my sight. In any situation, peace is a choice. A lot of questions come up when we get into these things. Knowing that your state of mind is a choice can be very empowering. You are not victimized by the projections outside of you. It is always a choice. But with sickness, for instance, people can feel guilty about being sick, about choosing sickness. This is a very common trap. But ultimately, what is happening with sickness is that it is a decision that the mind is making. The Course teaches this in Lesson 136 and in the How is Healing Accomplished section of the Manual for Teachers. The mind feels guilty. So it projects sickness out onto the body, which is like calling a witness up to the stand and then saying, See, God, I am not whole and complete, eternal and changeless. 
I am this weak little frail body, and I am right about it. You know, I am little, and I am right. In a sense, sickness comes about out of the fear of healing. When the warm, gentle reminder of light comes into our mind, which the deceived mind is afraid of, it then chooses a defense mechanism to provide a witness that will say, You are wrong, God, and I am right. This is how, and this now leads us into the authority problem, which the Course tells us is the basic underlying problem in our mind behind everything. The idea that there is an authority issue going on in the deceived mind between itself and God is just too big of a thing to think about. Me? I have an issue with God? It is too monstrous of an idea. So the mind literally projects it out into the world. Now, I am a person in the world and I do not have an authority problem with God. I have an authority problem with my parents or a politician or lawyer, with my husband or with my boss. It gets transferred and projected when really the central authority issue or question is Was I created by God as spirit? Changeless and eternal? Or can I make myself up? Can I make myself up as I go along? Can I make something that is different than that? Everyone who seems to come to this world and believes that they are a person in the world has this authority issue going on. Of course, this is only within the deceived mind. In reality, God knows his son is eternal and changeless. But within the dream of the world, there is an issue going on with God. This is not a conscious issue. If you look back at your journey, you may have taken a few different routes before coming to the Course and to the idea that God is love. There is something about that idea, that God is love, that just resonates. Yes, I have always known that had to be the truth. Then the Course comes along and tells you that every time you get angry at someone or make a special love or special hate relationship and every time you try to justify your thoughts it is just an expression of that authority problem. The Course is helping us to really get down to changing our perceptions so that we literally can see the world differently. You may even come to a conscious thought that God is love. That is a synopsis of forgiveness and it has to be an experience We do not need another theology to talk about. We do not need another religion. We have had enough religions. Jesus says that there can never be a universal theology. 
There is never going to be a time on this planet when everybody has one religion. The ego is fragmented and everybody has different perceived self-concepts and beliefs. Within the perception of the world, there will not be any universal theology. But there can and must be a universal experience.